This is not an events-based podcast, right? Like, right now, this is not an events-based podcast. This is a sales and marketing podcast. What we're about to go into right now, like, I'm not going to lie. Like, we have over 400, 500 videos on YouTube. Y'all can go ahead and check it out, whatever the case may be. What I'm about to give to my brother right here is, like, literally, like, the real. Like, Mm -hmm. okay, cool. You want to be 10, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 in events-based sales? These are the things that you have to prepare for and be prepared to do. One of the easiest ways, one of the best ways that I've grown my events-based brick and mortar businesses is through giveaways, right? I've built up our data list, I've built up our client bases, I've built up our Instagrams off giveaways, right? And we'll simply, and like, I'll give it all, like, y'all can take this, run with it, make a whole bunch of money, whatever the case may be. I won't even send you an invoice. Um, <laughs> one of the easiest ways to do this is... The biggest risk that most entrepreneurs take is trying to build a successful business without funding. But that risk is a reality for one out of every three entrepreneurs because their personal credit isn't where it needs to be in order for them to access that capital. Now, the truth is you can close the gap between where your business is versus where you want it to be by leveraging business credit. But if your personal credit report is poor, 99% of banks and lenders are going to deny you from doing so. And I should know because a couple of years ago, I leveraged my personal credit report to get funding from Chase to start my company. And now that very same company, Take All Financial, is serving entrepreneurs just like you that are looking to restore their credit to get access to five to six figures in funding. So if you wanna go from risk to reward, click the link above or below this video to schedule your free consultation so that we can restore your credit and put you in position to access capital to build the business of your dreams. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Marvin Francois Show, your number one source for all things business, finance, and investing. And today huh, is a very special day because our guest today is an entrepreneur, real estate investor, mentor, and event space expert extraordinaire. To date, our guest has done well over $3.5 million in revenue from running his own event space business and is using platforms like Event Space Elites, Scale Your Venue, and Venue University to educate other business owners alike on how they can do the same. Whether he's providing valuable resources to aspiring entrepreneurs on how to find, fund, and fill their first event space, or helping establish entrepreneurs double revenue in their current event space, our guest's impact proves that his success in the space is not coincidence, it's confirmation. Ladies and gentlemen, from Brooklyn, New York, I'm here with the one, the only, my guy, Brian Waldron, a.k.a. Billionaire B. What's going on, family? How Yo, are you? Yo, I'm not going to lie. Y'all know how to make somebody feel real welcome. <laughs> What's going on, brother? How are you? Yo, I feel amazing, man. I just super appreciate you even having me back on here for real. Most definitely, man. I'm extremely excited to bring you back. You know, the first one was a banger. Uh, this one is going to be an even bigger bigger one. And uh, yeah, man, you're you're you're... You're the goat of your space. I would have been remiss if I didn't bring you back. People was banging down my door saying like, yo, we need more game. We need more sauce. I say, say less. We're going to make it happen. And here we are. So welcome back, man. Yo, I'm I'm prepared to. If y'all thought game last time, I'm not going to lie. We about to sauce it up crazy. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. So first and foremost, obviously, I did a, I did an okay job introducing you, right? Mm-hmm. But obviously, nobody knows B better than B himself. So for those who aren't familiar, let's get them familiar. Who exactly is Billionaire B. Absolutely. Yo, what's going on, y'all? My name is Brian Walger in Brooklyn, New York. Shout out BK. You already know the vibes. Um, been brick and mortar event spaces for five years, did over three and a half million dollars in event space sales in my brick and mortar businesses. Fully exited all four of those locations, not the least ended, fully exited as we were able to sell and exit those businesses in all cash fire deals. Now we do have the number one event space consulting program in the country, showing over 420 clients how to find, fund, and fill their very own event space. Exciting. All right. So obviously that's where you are now. You've had a tremendous amount of success, but let's let's go back a couple of years because it's, I think it's important that we give people context on everything that led up into this point. Let's go back to 27. 27- 2017, right? It's the year 2017. How exactly do you go from being a waiter at Italy NYC to getting started in the event space industry? Walk me through that. Oh my God. <laughs> Yo, okay. So graduated college in 2017. Right. Could not get a job mm-hmm. because you know how the climate is. It's That's absolutely that. insane. Right. It's like a four year doesn't mean that you're going to get be marketable. Thousand so percent. Yeah. That's a whole other situation. Got a job as a server at Italy. Mm-hmm. Um, and was just trying to figure it out. Literally got my first job as a server, was making like $360 a week. I'm like, this is BS. Like mm-hmm. this, this ain't it, right? Um, literally lied to my other restaurant talking about, hey, look, listen, like I've been a server before. I was really like a host. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you gotta you gotta fake it till you make it sometimes. Thousand percent. And I got a job as a server, got up to making like fourteen hundred dollars a week, but I always kind of had like that ambition to just do more. Right. You know what I'm saying? And I was always wanted to be my own business owner. I always wanted to be my own biz, uh, be a business owner for myself. And I was just like, yo, I, I just want more. There was an event space in my area and I asked to like just start working there on my off shifts. Mm-hmm. 
people coming into this event space dropping like 500 a bando for a night. Yes, and I'm sir. like, this is crazy. Now, mind you, I'm working my tail off to make that kind of money in a week. Mm -hmm. Somebody is coming, the owner not even there, mm -hmm. and they're getting paid 500 to to $1,000 a day, a mm -hmm. night, whatever the case may be. Cool. I'm like, all right. I got to come get one of these. Mm -hmm. So I literally <laughs> stacked up all my bread for a year, mm -hmm. saved up $30,000, and I got my first event space right here in Brooklyn, Fulton and Albany. Shout out, shout out Bed style You know the vibes. Mm -hmm. And literally knew nothing about event spaces. Knew nothing about event space, besides the work that I did, obviously. But it's not like I... There was nobody teaching this stuff. Mm -hmm. There was nobody showing how to find fun and fill all that good stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So I was just... Just me and vibes. Mm -hmm. Just me and, me and God, you, right? You and God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Just trying right. to figure this out. So, went broke. Mm. Went broke. Literally drained my entire life savings into that space. Had wow. no money. And uh, couldn't pay rent for the first couple months. Wow. And I wouldn't wish this on my worst anyway. Like, it's, it's scary. Right. It's a scary sight, right? Mm. Learned digital marketing. So, I literally had to... I started teaching myself how to run Facebook ads. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to be very honest. This is back in 2017. Like, it was way easier to run ads right. back then versus now. Like, 2017 Facebook versus 2024 Facebook, different. whole different vibe. Right. Whole different vibe. Like, back then, you could throw a freaking picture at a wall and it'll mm -hmm. go. You know what I'm saying? Now, it's a whole different bowl bo game. But anyway, taught myself Facebook ads, started learning how to run ads, and I make $15,000 my third month in business. Mm. At that point, I'm like, yo, it's up. Mm -hmm. Took all the money, and this is when I started learning about credit, too. So I got my first credit card. It was a Chase Inc. Unlimited credit card. Still have it to this day. Mm -hmm. uh, with, like, a 25K limit. Liquidated that. Used that money. Got my second event space. Now we're doing, like, $30,000 a month. Fast forward. COVID happened. Shut everything down. It was it was bad. It was, was, like, trying to figure things out with my landlords, whatever. Whatever. COVID opened back up. Did $50,000 my first month. Got another event space. Got two other locations. Shout out Blake Dumont. And then eventually we were able to get to $150,000 per month in sales with our event space business. Fast forward several years later, now you're not new to this, you're true to this. And I think what's dope about you is not only the success you had, I mean, we talked about the numbers, right? $3.5 million uh, in total revenue and counting. But talking more about now the impact you've been able to have on other people that are either were already in the space and were struggling or individuals that were trying to get started in the space. Talk a little bit about some of the success that your students have been able to have under you from when you've launched a lot of programs you have now. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I want to be very, very clear, right? There's there's a difference between and I want to say this and try to be as politically correct as possible, or not politically correct as possible. OK, there is. If you do something once, you're familiar. Mm -hmm. If you do something repeatedly, it's systematic and predictable, mm -hmm. right? You know what I'm saying? So it's the same thing. Like, I see a lot of people, and this is just overall, like, in the coaching space, right? And no shade to anybody at all. Right. But, like, people do it one time, and they're just like, oh, yeah, I can teach people how to do this, whatever the case may be. Like, sure, I can, but are you an expert? Right. And I feel like a lot of times people get into these spaces, and they just kind of, like, throw a couple courses or whatever the case might be together, and it's just like, oh, yeah, I could teach people how to do this. And, like, sure, cool, granted, you can do that, right. but are you really an expert? And don't get me wrong, when somebody calls you out on your shit, like, it's mm -hmm. going it's going to hit the fan. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because people are going to see that you're not really who you are. Right. So I didn't – it wasn't until we had one, two, three, four locations – hundreds of thousands of dollars a month in revenue before we really even were like, okay, cool, we can do this. Because it's one thing to get it right the first time. Mm -hmm. It's another thing to get it right the second time. But three, four, five, six, and seven, now you have something that's systematic and predictable. Right. And that's what became Event Space Elites. Because we started off with like a course, which you mentioned, the Venue University, the Six Figure Event Space Accelerator. But Event Spaces is not an easy game. There are so many pitfalls. I mean, build out, marketing, sales, lead generation, uh, leasing, lease review, lease negotiation, letter of intent, LOI. Like, the list goes on and on and on. And there is, like, it's a very capital-intensive business. Not to right. say it's not. It's, it's a need-based business. Mm -hmm. It's been, a, this type of business has been around since the days of the Parthenon, mm -hmm. right? But there's a lot of pitfalls. And I've personally seen because going which i'm sure we'll talk about a little bit later but goes into our program scale your venue where we help struggling event space owners or people who don't know how to market or whatever the case may be and i've literally gone on calls with people who are like three months behind of their rent eighty thousand dollars in debt because mm. they thought that they could just open up a space and all the people in their town would come running and guess what it never did mm -hmm. but at least with event space at least what we're able to do is we're able to get it right from the beginning mm -hmm. set the foundation right find the right property negotiate it right analyze it right negotiate the lease right build it out correctly and now to the point where we can know how to market it mm -hmm. so we have the systems to repeatedly and systematically generate leads nurture those leads and turn them into sales i love it so with that being said we got real people watching this podcast trying to get real information on how they could get 
started in the space, how they can find fun and fill their own event space. Oh yeah. I want to give them all the I want to give these people so much game to where they could take this information by itself and get started in the space. Oh. Can we do that? I'm gonna say this right now. Like you you could use this part for the trailer or okay. however you market or whatever okay. case me. This is not an event space podcast. What camera am I looking at? That one? Yeah, yeah. That's this it. is not an event space podcast, right? Like right now, this is not an event space podcast. Okay. This is a sales and marketing podcast. Ooh. What we're about to go into right now, like I'm not gonna lie, like we have over 400, 500 videos on YouTube. Y'all could go ahead and check it out, whatever the case may be. What I'm about to give to my brother right here is like literally like the real. Like, mm. okay, cool. You want to be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 thousand dollars in event space sales. These are the things that you have to prepare for and pre be prepared to do mm-hmm. for real mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. okay okay we about to turn this into a, a sales and marketing podcast that's oh, what yeah. you're doing okay got you before we get into the sales and marketing we got to make sure we understand how to find the space first Absolutely. Right? all right so first let, let's 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 find the space what yeah. is the first step if i'm watching this what's that first step i need to take to get my first location to get started in the event yeah space absolutely business? number one uh, top three websites, y'all probably heard about me talk about them before, loopnet.com, Crexy, that's C-R-E-X-I.com, and Craigslist. In our program, we actually use about 12 to 15 different websites because we're finding locations for our clients and whatnot, mm-hmm. but you can get started with those three. The, the, now, I'm going to be very honest with you. Like I said, this is a sales and marketing podcast, right? Let's do you it. don't want to know how to market, we want to know so. Me telling you those websites does not help you. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell you why. Because this is a volume and a filtering game at that point. When we're trying to find these spaces, it's volume and filtering. So what you're going to do when you're going to these websites, first and foremost, I want to reset the room. I want to reset the level of expectations. You want to get your event space in 30, 45 days quick like that? Mm -hmm. This is the level of volume you want to be doing. You want to be reaching out to. When I say reach out, I mean like go and call Mm -hmm. 500 locations a week. 500. Like I'm just... I'm being I'm being for real. Mm-hmm. Like this is gonna weed out all the people who are like, oh my god, get rich, get rich quick. This that. like you want to make bread in this game. You want to make bread fast. I'm right. telling you the real. Right. You want to get a location fast. And like if you want to find a location six months, twelve months, eighteen months, whatever the case may be, like by all means. I'm talking about hustlers right now who want to get the bread quick. You mm-hmm. feel me? So now it's just like, all right, cool. Five hundred locations. Mm-hmm. Out of that five hundred locations, let's dock it down to ten percent. Fifty are going to be zoned slash feasible for event space. Because remember, not every single location, you have retail, you have manufacturing, you have industrial, you have flex, you have office, you have all these different types of zoning, right? Not every single one is going to work for event space. Mm -hmm. So literally what we have in our program is something called outreach specialists where they will go ahead and cold call all these different locations. You tell me, Brian, uh, I want a location in Brooklyn, New York. Our OSs are going to call every 500 locations in your area Mm -hmm. that week and go ahead and filter out which ones the landlords are okay with and that are already zoned for event space. So now out of that 500... We're looking at about 50. Mm-hmm. This is just the real, right? Out of those 50, now it comes down to how how the how the realtor is going to be communicating. Because I'm not going to be very honest with you. I love my realtors, but a lot of them are trash. Okay. So when it comes to those, now when you're communicating with those realtors, some of them are not going to send you photos. Some of them are not going to be talking to you. Some of them are not going to want to show you the property without getting a financials, whatever the case may be. This is like we we find over we found over 400 locations for our clients. Like this is like this is I'm not telling you, I'm not telling you based off stuff that I've read. I'm telling you about stuff that I've done. Facts. You feel me? Yes, sir. So now it's like, okay, cool. Out of those 50 locations, you're probably going to be able to send an LOI. That's a letter of intent to maybe three to five that same week. Now, mm-hmm. what, what a letter of a, a letter of intent is, mm-hmm. is basically it's a soft commitment to move forward with that property. Mm-hmm. So now of those three to five spaces, guess how many in a month you're probably going to go to lease? One. Mm-hmm. One to two. But it, here's the thing, right? I know it sounds crazy. I know it sounds like a lot of work. But don't you feel a lot better knowing like, hey, look, listen, if I want to get this done in the next 30, 45 days, this is, this is the input mm-hmm. that I have to put in to get the output that I want, right? And that's literally how you find your space. We, for us to accomplish that with across all our clients, we're looking at about 12 to 15 different websites to the point where I literally paid a software developer where we have our own software that utilizes artificial intelligence to scan all these different websites, feed them into our own system, mm-hmm. and then utilizes artificial intelligence to scan the photos to see which ones are going to work and which ones don't. Oh, this is deep. Oh, this is very, very deep. Very okay, deep. so then if if I'm going through 500 and I'm whittling it down to the top 10 and then from there ultimately trying to find my number one from your years of expertise, but more importantly now being in a position where you're helping event space owners all mm-hmm. across the country, what are some of those key things that we're looking at to whittle down the top 10, the top five, the top 1% of spaces that we could look at to start our business? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So there's really about, I would say about three or four. Okay. And it's so funny because we we had to, <laughs> we just built a, a calculator that like computes all like you put in the answer some questions and it's it's crazy. Okay. Like we created an entire calculator. It's a it's a really an algorithm actually okay. that um if you answer certain questions it'll tell you basically if this is a good space or not whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. One of the biggest ones is open floor plan, right? Mm. Uh, open floor plan, not too many poles, not too many rooms or anything like that. Big open space because remember people are congregating the events, right? Mm-hmm. Um, number two. 
is uh, natural light. People love natural light. Now, this is a little bit counter, not counterproductive, but like it kind of goes against me because my first location was a basement. And we had no open, we had no sun, uh, natural light, but we had great open floor plan. So it really, really worked. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, number number the, the third one really is. And I want to see if the, the third one is obviously zoning. Right. If it's going to work for the particular usage, because it's so funny, I was talking to my uh, my permit, uh, my friend who does permits and there's certain levels when it comes to zoning. Right. You can have the like one of the most difficult ones. Is you have to do something called the conditional use variance. Say it again. Con- conditional use or variance. OK. Right. Where basically the property is permitted. However, for it to be used for your specific use, you want to get the city to basically make an exception. Mm. Right. And those are some of the most difficult ones to get. They can take anywhere from four to six months to get. Right. right? Then you have uh, just simple permits like, okay, cool. You want to do uh, break down walls, sheetrock, whatever the case may be, all that stuff. Now, I'm going to be very honest cosmetic stuff, you could probably get away from that, but you didn't hear that from me. <laughs> right. But those are one of the biggest things. There's levels to that. Right. Mm-hmm. So typically, when we are looking at properties, one of the biggest things, like the third one, would really be like, okay, cool. Does it have an overlapping use or is it already permitted? Because think about it like this if I can go and just find an event space that already went out of business or maybe like a uh, fitness studio or a gym, something with an overlap or maybe even a retail, that saves me a lot of time, money, and energy from going and refitting out this property. Mm-hmm. So those are really like the top thing. And then there's other one kind of like subsector ones. Like that's the big three. Those are like really like the big three, you know what I'm saying? Listen, if you're an entrepreneur struggling to get funding because of your bad credit, then this video is for you. You see, I understand that when banks deny businesses for funding, they're not just denying businesses the capital they need, but they're also denying business owners the resources that they need to build the business of their dreams. And as a business owner, I've seen this happen over and over and over and over again, but I want you to know that there's a solution. Because here at Takeoff Financial, we've helped countless entrepreneurs just like you go from having poor personal credit and not being able to access funding to having perfect personal credit that they were able to leverage to access five to six figures in funding, and we want you to be the next one. So click the link above or below this video to secure your free consultation, and we'll see you on the other side of success, family. Talking numbers, if I'm looking to get into the space, how much do I need to get started? Like, what is the, if you don't have X amount, like, you can't even- Post COVID, 30 to 50,000. Break that down. Yeah, absolutely. So I Ideally, we look for micro event spaces, and this is this is just me. Like this, like this is what we focus on. Micro event, micro spaces. event space, right? And what I mean by that is uh, sub four thousand square feet or up to about two hundred people, whatever's less. Okay, right. So with that being said, that's what we focus on. Now, obviously, there's people who do 300, 300 400 big weddings, whatever the case may be. What we focus on is micro event space, and the reason being is because. Think about how many events you've been to that you have had 300, 400 people. Probably mm-hmm. not that many. Maybe two or three weddings. It's wedding season now, right? Mm-hmm. Um, while this is being shot, right? Um, how many events that you have you gone to that are maybe 60 to 120 people? You know, maybe like a kid's birthday party, maybe like a baby shower, a small bar mitzvah, whatever the case may be, right? So 60 to 120 is really that sweet spot, which is sub 4,000 square feet, right? Mm-hmm. Ideal on the low end, probably maybe 15 to 1,800 square feet. Okay. Right? So in terms of capital investment, when I talk about capital investment, I'm talking uh, build out. You know, floors, walls, ceiling, electrical, plumbing, this, that, and the third, whatever the case may be. I'm talking moving cost, first month, last month, rent, security, things of that nature, whatever the case may be. And I'm talking furniture, right? Mm -hmm. Tables, chairs, bar, food stations, rental furniture, things of that nature. All those different things are what makes up your capital cost. Now, if you're looking at a space between 1,500 and I would say on the high, high end, maybe 4,500 square feet, it's going to range based on finishes, size, um, moving cost of the landlord, negotiation skills, mm-hmm. right? That's going to go and play into about thirty dollars to $50,000 on the okay. low end. Before, we used to say twenty forty thousand, but since post-COVID, everything's gone a lot higher, especially markets like New York, New Jersey, California, things of that nature. Got you. Now, when it comes, we, we understand how much we need. What are some of the different strategies that either you yourself have used or that you're advising, excuse me, a lot of your clients use when it comes to the financing aspect of it? Where yeah, are we getting the bread yeah, absolutely. to go ahead and secure these spots? 100%. So one of the biggest things that I think makes our program different, and this is not like a pitch or anything like that. This is just like what I would recommend to anybody, right? right? Um, I highly recommend not using your own money to start any business for that matter. Like I said, this is not an event space podcast. This is a sales and marketing. You are selling yourself to, in this case, the creditors Mm -hmm. in order for them to finance you for your business. How do I do that? Having the proper LLC set up, having good credit, things of that nature, right? And I'm not, I'm sure you've had thousands of, you know, people talk about credit. You talk about credit, all that stuff. So I'm not going to take up too much of the audience's time. One of the biggest things I will say though, is that you can definitely get that $30,000 to $50,000, 0% interest from Several credit cards, you know, Chase, American Express, Navy Federal, the big ones, right? Mm -hmm. Bank of America, things of that nature. So ideally what we do um, is something called a credit stacking assessment where 
we're going to do a full analysis of our uh, of our client's credit report and we're going to see essentially okay cool what data points work and are you are you financeable are mm -hmm. you creditable right mm -hmm. things like utilization sub 30 percent things like having a low amount of inquiries because you don't want to look like you know you're pimping yourself out for credit right Thousand percent. things like uh too many collections late payments those mm -hmm. are things that are really really hurt you right mm -hmm. and then of course obviously one of the biggest ones is comparable credit right where it's just like okay cool like have you been extended this type of credit before now obviously when you're working with a lot of newer business owners they don't really have that comparable credit however if they do have a strong personal credit profile it's easy to get maybe i'd say three to five different credit I'd, let's say three to be safe one from each of the credit bureaus of uh, equifax experience and transunion to get maybe ten thousand dollars from each one of those that's your thirty thousand dollars right there zero percent mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay but i'm not a rapper but you're not but he's not a rapper he's just <laughs> but i'm not a credit coach he's just the event space goat ladies and gentlemen you know what i'm saying but the one of the biggest things is that because this is such a capital intensive business mm -hmm. We have to understand the credit side because how many people do you... The average American doesn't have $1,000 to their name. Mm -hmm. And you're telling people, that, all right, cool, yeah, you want them to start this business, you need thirty to $50,000. It's a lot easier to borrow thirty to $50,000 than save or earn it. 1,000%. 1,000%. Okay. We found the space. We financed our space. I want to start talking about filling the space, which is the sales and marketing. But before we do, I want to talk a little, just a little bit about the boring side of the business, which is just once we found and finance the space, what do, what do we need to put in place in terms of handling the day-to-day -day operations once the business is up and running? Like, what are the key hires, resources, systems that we need to make sure we have before we can get this business off the ground? Oh, yeah, absolutely. So the key players that you're going to have in your, in your event space, and, I, and I'll start in the order of which I would outsource the first. Okay. Because I know that's a big key decision when you're a CEO, right? It's just like, okay, cool. What do I, what do I outsource first? And one of the biggest mistakes that I, I feel like I made in my business starting out was I took too long to buy my time back, right? Now, what do you mean by that? Yeah, absolutely. So your job as a CEO is to work on the business, not in the business. So when you are looking at your schedule and you have, let's say, 40 hours of consumable time to work on the business. What is that being drafted out to? Is that being put out to answering inquiries? Is that being putting out to cleaning, setting up rentals, fixing, or is it going towards sales and marketing, mm -hmm. right? So one of the biggest things with that is that if I was starting top down, well, not top down, but if I was starting in terms of like what's the most important to outsource to best is obviously first things housekeeping, right? Find a cleaner. You can get one on Indeed.com. Shout out Myra. She's one of the best cleaners that I've ever had. Um, but obviously have a housekeeper. Second is inquiries, right? So get a setter in your DMs. Get a, a virtual assistant. You can mm -hmm. get one like Upwork, Elance, whatever. The case. Well, Upwork is what Elance used to be. Um, and get a VA. You can get one 3 to $5 an hour, mm -hmm. right? And that was, literally, like, that was one of the biggest biggest catalysts in my success because when you're running four to five different event spaces at the same time, the level, like, I was spending probably 10 hours a day just answering messages. And, mm -hmm. it, like, I was about to pull my hair out. But as a CEO, you need to make a decision to trust somebody. And this is this, this is a really big thing, right? I'm saying. This, is, this, is, this is a really big thing, right? Because yeah. a lot of people are stunting their business's growth mm -hmm. by not being able to outsource quick enough. Mm -hmm. your, your schedule as a CEO, shout out Layla Hermosi for, like, I got this from one of her videos, but... Your like your schedule as a CEO should not look the same every four to six weeks. Your schedule should not, and I don't care really who agrees with me or not, but your schedule should not look. You should not be working on the same things every four to six weeks, and I'm gonna tell you why. Let's because you have not figured out a way to sustainably outsource that to somebody else. You're still doing the same things, and if you're still doing the same things as the CEO, that means the business is not growing. Mm hmm. Okay. So if I'm, if, as a business owner, if I'm still doing the same exact thing, well, I guess there was a, be, would be an asterisk next to it because if I'm doing the things that are actively growing the business, then that would be okay if I'm still doing those same things every four to six weeks. Now I'm talking about the specific day to day, right? I'm not okay. talking like the umbrella things like, okay, cool. Obviously as a CEO, your biggest things are, are to do what? Work on making, getting more customers and yep. making them worth more, right? Yep. That That's a more. big umbrella thing, right? right? But if you're constantly the one I'm searching on Instagram to find the best content. I'm out here editing my videos. Like, I'm out here creating my thumbnails. Mm -hmm. And you haven't found somebody to, to outsource that over... Now, obviously, you can't outsource your face, mm -hmm. right? You can't outsource being the face of the business, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm talking about, like, those, those smaller things. Like, I don't edit my own videos anymore. I don't create my thumbnails anymore. I don't, like, I don't... I don't go ahead and, and book the flights when we do our venue tours anymore. I don't do those things anymore. Mm -hmm. I show up, I shoot the video, and I walk out, mm -hmm. right? 
then it's like, okay, cool. Now it's like, I don't shoot all the videos. Now I bring in uh, one of our client success managers to go and shoot some of the videos, right? You'll see, you'll, you'll see, shout out my guy, Terry on like, he'll be on some of the videos now. He'll answer some of the questions, right? Mm -hmm. I don't do the sales calls anymore, right? You'll see my sales team handle those things, right? So it's like, yes, I focus on getting more customers and making them worth more. But what that looks like on a day-to-day -day basis is different every four to six weeks. Mm -hmm. Do you think that, for you personally, does that is that a revenue amount that you get to where it's like, okay, it only makes sense now for me to bring someone in, or is it more so just on a case by case basis where it's like, yo, it doesn't matter if you're making, if I'm only making five thousand, if I believe I need to go out and get somebody to come in and do this, I gotta go ahead and make. They're that one and the right same right. because by you being able to outsource those tax, you will by default make more money. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Think about it like this, right? Let's take it back to the event space. Let's right? do it. If I am still cleaning, how much time do I have to go ahead and learn Facebook marketing? How much time do I have to go and network with people? How much time do I have to go ahead and source other venues, mm -hmm. right? Now that I've found somebody to clean the venues, now I can go ahead and start negotiating more leases to get more locations. I can start uh, maybe finding a builder to build all my rental furniture. I can go and maybe meet with contractors to do renovations on all the properties, mm -hmm. right? And because I've been able to outsource these tasks, I am now able to go ahead and utilize my time to produce more revenue for the company. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that time can be used being on platforms like the Marvin Francois Show to help grow your business. Come Absolutely. On, come on now. We talked about running the space, finding it, funding it. I want to get into what you said at the top of the episode. Let's talk sales and marketing. Let's talk sales and marketing. Let's talk filling the space. Let's talk filling the space. If there's someone that knows how to run an extremely profitable event space business and he's not sitting across from me, I'm in trouble. <laughs> I'm in trouble because I may have I may have brought on the wrong guest. I want to talk about the marketing side first, Absolutely. right? Because marketing is such a very interesting thing that I still, I've, a lot of entrepreneurs that are trying to crack that seven figure mark sh normally struggle with. And I really want to break it down for especially people that are either trying to get an event space business so they don't bump their head as many times as some of your clients have, or for people who are already established that are struggling to figure it out. And we want to break down the game for them, right? Yeah. One of the key things in marketing is being clear on who your target audience is, mm -hmm. right? You talked about it earlier with different event space sizes going for different types of events. When you're creating that avatar, whether it was for yourself when you were back in the space or for clients that you're working with, what does that process look like? Absolutely. So there's only one avatar that me or any of my clients work with, mm -hmm. and it's private events, right? It's private events, intimate events. I'm talking baby showers, wedding receptions, kids parties, birthday parties, things of that nature, mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> now that we, we, we know that avatar, right? So now going forward in terms of let's let's take it from the frame of you drop me in, what is this, like 90-day uh, billionaire. <laughs> drop me in the middle of nowhere. Okay. A space that I don't know. Yep. A location that I don't know, mm -hmm. whatever the case may be. How am I going to bring this to a $10,000 a month venue in 90 days, mm -hmm. right? Looking at it from that frame of mind, one of the first things I would do is I would have the right lead magnet or the right offer, mm -hmm. right? Because the thing about it is you can have the nicest venue in the world. Nobody knows who you are. Like, what? How do you get them? How do you, mm -hmm. how do you attract those people, right? Mm -hmm. And the number one thing is an offer. If you have an offer that people can't, can't refuse or or just sounds so good it just can't be true mm -hmm. then they're gonna flock to it right mm -hmm. so one of the easiest ways i like to do this is uh, a giveaway mm. right one of the easiest ways one of the best ways that i've grown my event space brick and mortar businesses is through giveaways right i've built up our data list i've built up our client bases i've built up our instagrams off giveaways right and what's simply in like i'll give it all like y'all can take this run with it make a whole bunch of money whatever the case may be i won't even send you an invoice um <laughs> but one of the easiest ways to do this is just literally go on canva create a flyer that says hey look listen we're giving away three dates right post it on your instagram and say hey look listen all you got to do to win a free date is tag two people um join our join, sign up on our funnel right so like you'll have like a little funnel that you make on quick funnels or go high level whatever the case may be they'll put in their first name last name email phone number and that's the real key here but i'm going to go back to that in a second right um tag two people Follow the page and uh, sign up on our funnel. You make a little giveaway funnel or whatever the case may be. Now, a lot of people get this wrong because they're not capturing the data. They're just trying to build up their Instagram and get vanity metrics. You beat right? me to it. Let's you go. need to get the data. Yep. None of this makes a difference. None of this makes sense if you do not have a way. Look to at Josh nodding in the people. background. If Josh is not in the background, you talking. Go ahead, talk. You talk. know what I'm saying? Like none of this makes a difference if you do not have the data. Yeah. And it's not about poaching or anything like that. It's it's favor for favor. It's something for something, right? right. Like you are in the runnings to get a free date which can cost upwards of thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. And I'm just getting your little old first name, last name, email, phone number, yeah. right? Now, here's the thing, right? 
all this stuff, like, and, and people really mess this up because they don't have the back end system in place, this and the third, whatever the case may be. If I had to make this venue ten thousand dollars in the middle of nowhere in ninety days, right? Literally, what I would do is every single person that comments on that page and follows me goes into my funnel, whatever the case may be. I'm shooting them a DM instantly. Hey, what's going on? My name is Brian. I'm calling you from Billionaire B Venue, whatever the case may be. By the way, are you looking to have an event? I saw you joined our giveaway. Yeah, you know, I was looking to have an event. My sister, she's having a baby. Blah blah blah. Oh, awesome. That's I, I really, you know, I know we're gonna be picking a giveaway winner in the next seven days or whatever the case may be. But I'd love to help you out for your venue. How won't you come down and to look at our open house? Oh, you know, cool. That sounds good. What days do you have available? Yeah, we'll be there Tuesday and Thursday, six to eight p.m. Cool. Uh, client comes down six to eight p.m. She's gonna come in see the beautiful venue. Now this is the real key here, right? You have to have an irresistible. Oh, I'm so sorry. You good? You you have to have an irresistible offer. So I am going to do something called a market comp analysis where I'm going to analyze and hint hint wink wink. Event Space Leads actually has a software that does this automatically and it's copyrighted. Um, <laughs> Yeah, love we're, dude, bro. We're, we're literally the only company in the country who can actually have a software that aggregates data for event spaces and pulls them all into one website for analysis purposes. But you know what I'm saying? We won't get into that. We <laughs> won't get into Shout that. out my trademark attorney. <laughs> well, sorry, my copyright attorney. Um, but literally what it literally at that point what you do is when they come into their, their open house, when they're in the funnel and they come to the open house, and now at this point, you have that irresistible offer where it's just like, hey, look, listen, you know, we can give you the venue, we can give you the tablecloths, the napkins, the napkins, charger plates, pop, 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 whatever the case may be, whatever you have your inventory for XYZ price point. Now, that price point is based on your market comp analysis and what people are charging, how big your venue is, whatever the case may be. But essentially, at that point, this person came in for a free event, but is now being closed on a paid one simply because of your giveaway funnel. Mm -hmm. and then you just reverse engineer the math you spend a certain amount of money on facebook ads to get people into the funnel what's your what's your opt-in rate what's your open house rate what's your close rate bah, 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 bah. And mm -hmm. no we're gonna break saying. that down i ain't gonna let you skip out let's 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 unpack that a little bit you said something <laughs> key nothing matters you have a lot of people that are posting content just to post content right putting stuff out there just to put stuff out there but they're not following the most important thing which is the data because yeah. the data tells the story of what you're doing right what you're doing wrong what you need to be doing more of what you need to be doing less of if i'm an event space owner what are the key kpis that i need to be tracking and make sure i have a clear picture of in order for me to grow my business oh yeah absolutely cost per lead uh basically every single person who puts their information into your funnel how much is going to cost you whether it's three four five six dollars a per cost per lead so that's a big thing right there cost per acquisition so that's basically uh how much money is it costing for somebody to show up to an open house well for somebody to sign up for an open house show up is a whole different metric algorithm whatever the case may be but uh to sign up and actually commit to an open house appointment right and then you have your various follow-up sequences or your setters or whatever the case may be make sure that they show up get them back on the open house get them back on the tour whatever the case may be and then at that point it's just really booking more tours right and then at that point your close rate right out of how many out of 10 people that show up to your open house how many people are putting down a deposit and these are the metrics and those vary from business to business from entrepreneur to entrepreneur we're actually in real time uh spending our own money to uh get our cost per leads down so we can actually give our clients the best ads mm -hmm. the best funnels the uh the best scripts and whatnot so they could just have them for free when they come into our program you talked before about irresistible offer irresistible offer you're someone that has created offers for your several event space businesses and you've audited i'm sure the offers that a lot of other event space business owners are making i know in the event space business they have packages, right? So you have different types of packages that you can use to ultimately sell individuals on. Can you give me a clear-cut example of what, what an irresistible offer would look like in one of these packages for this business that you're creating in the, in the middle of nowhere in Wyoming or wherever it is? That yeah, absolutely. Be? So typically you want to look at a trifecta. You want to have a do-it-yourself offer, which is just the venue. You have a done-with-you offer, which is venue and rentals that are in-house, and I'll explain what that means in a second. And then you have done-for-you, which is they walk in and everything's done, mm -hmm. right? So you want to have those three, but you want to really get good at selling on selling one. Now, which one that is differs per entrepreneur, and I'll say why. Because somebody like me, I didn't want to focus, and I really focus. sorry, I didn't want to focus on the done for you because it just took too much of my time now if i'm being very honest if i if i scaled it and i put like you know the right person in place i, I could have definitely scaled that one which going back in the future just because that one was probably four or five six thousand dollars per night i would have probably really got good at selling that one but at that time with what i knew at that time i really just focused on the done with you which was um we had our in-house rentals which like that for you, that might be like a grass wall or a baby table or white and black tablecloths or whatever the case may be. We actually have all these like packaged up for our clients and whatnot mm -hmm. in our roadmap. 
um, shout out, shout out Roadmap. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, y'all know what I'm talking about. Shout out Roadmap. Mm-hmm. Um, but now with those three different offers, like I said, you get really, really good at selling one, right? So for some people who want to, you know, be very, very lazy or whatever the case may be, that might just be the venue, which I would forbid because if you only have a bargaining tool of just the venue, you really don't have much to play with. At that point, somebody wants a discount, you're just taking off hours or you're taking off pricing, and that's never fun, right? Lowering mm-hmm. your price. But you, if you get really, really good at selling either the done with you or the done for you offer, which might be anywhere from twenty five to thirty five hundred dollars, or maybe even six to eight thousand dollars, depending on what you provide and how big your venue is or whatever the case may be, uh, you can scale to a million dollar business mm-hmm. very, very easily, very, very easily. When we talk about the sales side and all the different ways that you can make money with this event space, and I know we we slightly touched on it on the last episode. Uh, one of the biggest constraints you talked about seeing a lot of people had in the space was that they simply were just making money stri- simply just off the space in and of itself. Right. And there's so many more ways that you could peel this layer back. Talk to me a little bit about style sheets. How, if I'm an, uh, an event space owner, can I use style sheets to add more revenue to my business? Yeah, absolutely. So just to kind of reset the room for everybody who doesn't know, style shoot is essentially a mock shoot, right? Where instead of having an actual birthday event or an actual baby shower or whatever case may be, you just decorate the place like there is one. And these are so crucial because... Humans, by nature, are visual. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, okay, cool. I can tell you that I'm going to do all this stuff. Marvin, you and your girlfriend, you want to have a baby shower? Yeah, you want to have a safari-themed shower? Um, What does that look like, right? It's a lot easier to sell something or, better yet, have it sold for me Mm -hmm. when I could just have a portfolio on my Instagram of all the work that I've ever done. Mm -hmm. And that was a really, really, really key turning point in BK Event Spaces, which was the name of the uh, the event space company that we ran in Brooklyn, Brooklyn Mm -hmm. Event Spaces, BK Event Spaces. And that was a major turning point, like I mentioned, because we did several style shoots of birthday parties, baby showers, Mm -hmm. and wedding receptions to the point where when people saw our Instagram, they were enamored by our work, so by the time they showed up to open house one, they're gonna sh- they're they're gonna show up a lot more because they see the quality of work, and two, they're gonna be a lot warmer and more inclined to buy because they've seen the quality of our work, and that's why style shoes. So if uh, I'll 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 take it a step further, right? Let's do it. If you are a brand new event space owner, right? Let's take that same example, billionaire B event space in Wyoming, right? Mm-hmm. One of the easiest ways to pull this off, say for example, you have no inventory, you have no money, tisk tisk. All right, because <laughs> you didn't follow the road. Right, tisk tisk. Right, but anyway, say for example you didn't. Right, one of the easiest ways to do is just collaborate with event planners. Right, so I would just call up our, our DM on Instagram, ten to mm-hmm. fifteen, ten to twenty event planners in my and it's and, and I I love when when our clients and event space leads do it because I know it works. Okay, and when they do it and they make money from it, I'm just like yes, like mm-hmm. thank you. Right. Mm-hmm. Hit up 10 to 20 event planners in your area. Hey, what's going on? My name is Brian. Uh, I'm a brand new event space owner in the Wyoming area. Would love to do a style shoot for you. I will pay for all the photos and everything like that. If you'd be more than happy to just come decorate the venue, you'll have photos for your inventory, for your portfolio. I have photos for mine, mm-hmm. and we could just hopefully collaborate in the future. You're going to get at least two to three event planners that say yes. Mm-hmm. Why? Because they want to build up their portfolio too. And a lot of times, event planners, they want to build up their portfolio, and they want to do style shoots, but they just don't want to go ahead and pay event pay venues to do it mm-hmm. but if you're offering your venue for free then now at that point now it's just like okay it's a win-win for everybody 38 percent. that's the amount of entrepreneurs that are struggling to get their business funded because their personal credit isn't where it needs to be now you can look into alternatives like corporate credit cards and vendor accounts but the truth is the easiest way to get access to five to six figures in funding is to have good personal credit as an entrepreneur the stress of trying to build a successful business is already enough as is so why work harder than you need to when you can simplify the funding process by getting your credit restored my company take all financial has served hundreds of entrepreneurs just like you by helping them avoid the pain of getting denied for business funding by restoring their personal credit and we want you to be the next one. So click the link above or below this video to secure your free consultation and let's put you in position to get you funding that your business needs. Diving deeper into that, you just talk, talked about the importance of just leveraging partnerships to add more income to your business. You touched on this a little bit earlier, but I want to dive deeper into it. Talk about some of those partnerships with the rental companies that are providing us what is it got? Love seats, thrones, sofas, pedals, pedestals, things like that, that are also added revenue for our business as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, w- before I even, b- I, I want to preface that by saying every venue should have their own rentals, period, point blank, period. Like if you want to be a million dollar venue, like it's, 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 it's inevitable. Why? You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, the space is not enough. So if I have my own inventory, the love seat, the pedestals, the baby tables, the grass walls, the white walls, whatever the case may be, I can significantly charge a lot, a lot more. And that average order value goes up a lot higher, for example, right? Say, for example, you are charging $1,000 for just a space, right? With all those things, tablecloths, napkins, charger plates, whatever the case may be, now with all these things come together, we have a 
fully decorated venue. Mm. That's worth a lot more to a client. You can easily charge twenty five hundred thirty five three thousand dollars for that same night. Mm-hmm. I'm 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 gonna be very honest. There came a point in BK event spaces where we were turning people away who did not want to book a package. Like, why would I give you this Saturday night for a thousand dollars when I know somebody else is gonna come right behind you and pay twenty five hundred? Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So when it comes back down to the rentals at that point. Yes, cool. You can go ahead and partner with rental companies or whatever case may be. And for the style shoot, you absolutely should. Mm-hmm. But you should be reinvesting in. And shout out my guy Manuel in Detroit, uh, Detroit, Michigan, Prestige Manor. He's going absolutely crazy. But this is exactly what he did. Followed the roadmap. He came in, invested all the money, and like literally every single month, he was taking a portion of his profits to buy new furniture. And like literally, when we did a second video with him that's on my YouTube, he had like a whole slew of inventory just because every single month he was buying something a photo booth here a love seat here a car uh, uh a rental here whatever the case may be and now this expands on your inventory and now you're able to even create even more luxurious packages and charge even more because you own all the inventory josh put the camera on me you see what's going on here this may be one of the best sit downs we've done in quite some time young man this is getting good this is getting very good this is getting very, very good. I, I want to talk about something that you've done, been able to do in your space that I've seen as it's kind of like it's a higher level discussion that most business owners don't even, I think, don't keep in mind because the thought process is, oh, my business is my baby. I got to keep it forever. You didn't just, you know, shut down your event space business. You exited them. Yeah. Very big difference. 100%. Long-term play, long-term plan, because we're giving people the information on how they can get these businesses started and get them up and running now. But anyone who has a business at some point in time, not even from the moment you start the business, should be thinking about what is my exit going to be. 100%. Talk about what the planning was behind that for someone that's looking to get in this space but knows that, hey, in the next three years, five years, whatever that time period may be, I know I'm going to exit the, this business, and here's how. Absolutely. I didn't... I didn't. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we here. We no, here. no, 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 no. We here, we here, we here, we here, we here, we here. We here. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it, no the, the reason I said... The reason I, I guess I stammered for a second is because I actually just created a YouTube video on this. Yeah, yeah, I'm on it. And... Uh, <laughs> I'm on it. I'm on top of it. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> and um, I, I would have been... I, I would have... I would have... I guess to say better prepared to nah. break down Let's the exact, but I'll I'll go off my memory there now, you go. And, and hopefully my memory will serve me serve me well, right? Let's do it. But there's really three distinct things that you want to look at when you are planning to exit, not cut the lease, exit an event space business, right? And, I'm, mm-hmm. and hopefully my memory serves me qu- correctly, right? Mm-hmm. The first one is you want to aggregate the data, right? Ninety percent of businesses standing today, mm-hmm. standing today, like in real time, yes, sir. LLC, all that. BS, whatever the case may be, right, are not worth more than the paper that the LLC is written on. Mm. And I'll tell you why, and it's because they do not own any of the data. I can go to probably 50, I could probably go to 90% of the venues in Brooklyn right now, mm-hmm. and they don't even have a customer list. Yeesh. What does that mean? It means you are literally four walls, your lease. Mm. And any money that I was to pay you for your venue is probably just reduced to the ceramic tile that you have Mm -hmm. and the furniture that you have in your building. Nothing else. We were able to sell our venues for six-figure exits because of the data. Mm -hmm. Because it's a lot different when I say, hey, look, listen, I have a venue versus I have a lot, I have a venue with a customer list of 4,500 people and accounts receivable of $30,000. Different conversation. It's a whole different conversation, right? So the first one would be aggregate data. The second one would be documentation Mm -hmm. right because it's one thing to say yeah we have the data yeah we have the customer list yeah we have or we have this much on the books but is it is it viable let's talk about private equity for a second right if you go into venture capital i'm talking why combinator like that's a whole different conversation right Mm -hmm. like private equity i'm talking like shark tank things of that nature like you're not even a conversation Mm -hmm. unless you have tax returns bank statements, all that legit stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Like I I know pe- like I know business owners who haven't even filed taxes in five years. It's like hey, hey, hey. What? Hey, you're going to prison. Like <laughs> you're like, going to jail. Buddy. Like what? Right. Like that's a whole like we if I was to look at somebody's event space business right now and try to invest in it, they don't even have tax returns. I'm literally, like I said, I'm giving you what is worth on the ground. Right. Which is your furniture and your, the tile that you right. have on the floor. Right? right. Anybody can make claims. Anybody can make sales claims, right? Mm-hmm. It's a whole different conversation when we have it on legit paper. Yes, and that legit paper 
is a ta- is a tax form, right? Mm-hmm. Is is a ten ninety nine? Is a whatever the case may be, right? right? So that that's 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 the second one, right? And and the third one would really be having. How do I say? It? Like I said, if my right, if my here. memory serves, because I didn't I didn't know we would get into this level of conversation. But the the third one would really be preparation in terms of documentation, not documentation in terms of tax returns and whatnot, but talks but in terms of like have like you're an attorney, mm-hmm. right? Because the thing about and we can go into business brokers and stuff like that. Honestly, for a business that's selling for less than two hundred fifty thousand dollars, don't waste your don't waste your money on a, on a business broker, right? This is a bit of a higher level conversation, but. I'm talking in terms of just like having all this stuff documented, mm. asset deliverables, right? That's a big one. What mm. is actually coming? What is being specified in this sale, mm-hmm. right? Is it is it the in, is it the social media? That's actual real asset, right? Mm. When we sold the company, it had about maybe twenty two thousand followers of engaged followings on social media. That's really big. Customer list, email mm-hmm. list, things. Like, all this stuff needs to be documented in that sale. Mm-hmm. You can't just say it like, "Oh my God, well, yeah, you know, you can pay me a hundred thousand dollars." Like, there's a you can go on biz by selling. There, there's a dime a dozen of event spaces, restaurants who, who are trying to sell for millions or hundreds of thousands or whatever case may be. They're like I said, they're not worth the paper that that is written on, because none of this stuff is documented. None of this stuff is even relevant. So. Uh, again, it's really only if my memory serves me correctly. I have a YouTube video on this, so it, but I've recorded a little while ago. It's really the data. Mm-hmm. Do you own the data? Which is which is number one, rightfully so, right? Two is the is documentation, as in tax returns, bank statements. Is what you said this business is doing? Is it what it's actually doing? Yep. Because we're not even gonna have a conversation if this stuff isn't legit because mm-hmm. I can't trust it. Mm-hmm. And then number three, documentation on the sales side. And when I say that, I mean like. Like I said, you can have a business, and uh, you can have an investment business broker. You can have uh, an attorney who's legitimizing all this stuff like that on paper to know what we're actually talking about. Billionaire B, this was a riveting conversation, my brother. We may have to do a part three. We may very well have to do a part three. I, I genuinely enjoy bringing you on here and learning more about this page every single time. I know we got to get you out of here, but before we do, you you drop you drop your programs a couple of times per- periodically throughout the 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 pod. Before we close out. Let the people know where they can find you, but more importantly, let the people know about ESC, SYV, and Venue University. Yeah, absolutely. So what I really want to give to everybody, in, like, and don't get me wrong, like, if, if somebody's watching this podcast right now and they're like, they've known, like, in their heart of hearts, like, hey, look, listen, uh, I want to start an event-based business. I have an event-based business. I want to scale it. Like, mm-hmm. you could find me at Billionaire B, at Events Space Leads, at Scale Your Venue, whatever the case may be. But what I really like to do is I don't like to under deliver and over promise. Right. So what I really want to do is I want to give your entire audience a, a guide, like a mm. free guide. And what that free guide does is it breaks down the seven steps because like not everybody might have the time to go ahead and watch this entire right. podcast. Hopefully they do because I think we talked about a lot of useful information here. Thousand percent. But it's a free guide, totally free for your entire audience, mm. uh, breaking down the seven steps to find, fund, and fill their very own event space. Mm. And it encapsulates a lot of the things that we talked about mm. here uh, gives them an overview, gives them something. Uh, we have an audiobook version as well mm-hmm. where they can go ahead and just kind of review the information, get a good insight into what the event space industry is, how they can get started. Mm-hmm. And then at that point, if they do say like, hey, look, listen, this is really something that I can do and I can see myself winning at, then they know where to tap into us. And like, and we're, gonna, we're putting that in the description below. Yeah, 100%. 1,000%. 1000%. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first. Uh, once again, thank you, my brother, for coming through. But more importantly, thank you to each and every single one of y'all. If you haven't already, what are you doing? Take a second, take a minute, take an hour out of your day right here, right now to go ahead, slap the like button, show this episode, episode some love. As always, I'm Marvin Francois, Brian Waldron, a.k.a. Billionaire B. Y'all have been good. We've been great. This has been amazing. Thank y'all, and God bless. And make Peace. sure y'all subscribe. And make sure you subscribe. Make sure you subscribe. Peace. Peace.